the, the, most people won't fight because of that cost. It's just on, beyond them. Uh, but this was a young fellow, a young man with uh, three or four kids, and uh, he was determined he wasn't going to be taken down. Um, when it comes to the conservation authorities, I just want to tell you a little story to prove they don't have the authority. It happened up near Ashton, Ontario. I don't know if you, anybody knows where it is, but uh, uh, it, this, this young fellow bought a piece of property. It was 1.1 acres. Uh, it was low. Uh, there was solid trees growing there. It was a farmer's field originally. There was a small ditch across the corner of the farmer of this lot. It was only about uh, maybe 60 feet long across the diagonal corner of the lot. And uh, he he talked to the city of Ottawa before he bought it. He bought it for speculation. He was he made no bones about it. He was going to fix up the lot and sell it as a building lot. He talked to the city of Ottawa. They said it was definitely a building lot. It'd been uh, severed before amalgamation, and uh, they recognized it as a building lot. And, but they said, you'll have to talk with uh, whoever goes to build a house, you'll have to talk to conservation authorities about getting a permit. He said, oh, that's fine. He said, I'm not going to build a house, I'm just going to fix the lot up. So he's a landscaper, and he had lots of uh, fill left here and there in some sites, so he uh, uh, proceeded to draw in a few loads of fill, about a hundred and some. <laughs> and um, he uh, was making a real nice job of, of leveling this lot out. The lot was level enough, it just was a bit low. And uh, he got uh, a big piece of paper stuck on the laneway one day saying he ceased and desist, you know, conservation authorities, you can't do this. And uh, so he called Mike Wesley. Uh, one of our landowner members down in our area, he knew well, and uh, Mike went up and put a sign up on him, and he kept on going, back off government sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that went on for another another few days, another pile of loads, and then uh, he, in between, he got another, there was another sign up there, he just kept driving, he, they, but they put two of these warnings up, and then they sent him a registered letter. They were going to charge you if you don't come and talk to us. So when we uh, when he got that, when he got a little worried, and he talked to us, and uh, so we went with him to the meeting with Shirley Dolan, who uh, Nick just mentioned. She's a president of Carlton Landowners, and Mike Wesley, who is uh, pretty famous over in our country for fighting the wetlands over there, where they tried to take a 60 landowners' property and make it wetlands. And uh, before that was finished, we uh, dug a a ditch right through the provincially significant wetlands <laughs> ourselves <laughs> and nobody charged us so uh, it is an attitude a lot of this is attitude but uh, uh, you also have to have some of the laws on your side to know what you're talking about so uh, so in this case with the little lot Mike and uh, Shirley and myself went down there and uh, they were a little worried when they seen us they were surprised we were standing back and, and the man that was with us uh, went up to the counter and uh, talked to them about the meeting and uh, he said, well, who are these people? And uh, he said, oh, they're with me. And I said, what are they doing here? <laughs> you know? And uh, we've been there before, so they sort of recognize us. But um, anyways, uh, we went back in the back room, there's so nobody could hear us yelling. And uh, uh, Mr. MacGyver, Don MacGyver is uh, sort of second in command over there at Rita Valley. Uh, he proceeded to wag his finger at this young man that was a landscaper and uh, tell him how bad he was and how much trouble he was in. And, uh, you know, he'd been a lot smarter to come and get a permit from them and not go through all this, this hassle. And uh, he was a very calm young lad and he said, well, if I'd have came to you for a permit, would you give me one? He said, no, we wouldn't give you one. But he said, you wouldn't have to take all that stuff out of there now. And we're going to find you to boot. Well, um, anyways, uh, he said, well, that's not really working for me. They told me this is a building lot, and uh, I want to bring it up so it is saleable as a building lot. And I said, so he said, uh, uh, I, need a, I need a better answer than that. He said, that's not working. And uh, he said, well, you know that you cannot put any fill or do anything within 30 meters of a ditch. 30 meters of a waterway. So now, if you take, if you take a 1.1 uh, acre lot like that on the side of the road, 
and you take 30 meters off it from both directions because the road has a ditch as well. There's not too much of that lot left. And uh, so that's, uh, he said, so I can't do anything in that 30 meter edge. He said, nope, that's the law and you're going to have to stick to it. So uh, at that point I asked him, I said, well, I'd like you to show us where that says that in your legislation, where it says in, in the book where that 30 meter set, you know, setback is. And I said, this is private property you're dealing with here. Well, he had a bird, eh? He said, we're not talking about private property. We know you guys. I might have been wearing my hat. But <laughs> yeah. but, and uh, he said, uh, if this guy wants to get on, done here today, he better not listen to you guys and that credit crap like that. And uh, uh, I had a, the enforcer was sitting across from me. And uh, I turned to him and I said, uh, when I called him my name today, I can't because I can't remember it. But anyways, <laughs> but anyways I, said, I said, you and I have been through this before. I said, we've been out on the side of these ditches before. And, uh, and I said, you know there is no 30 meter setback anywhere in the legislation. And I said, you know that's a Department of Fisheries and Oceans suggested setback. Wow. Suggested setback. Remember that word. It's not official. And uh, I said, isn't that right, sir? And he just dropped his head and didn't say a word. <laughs> At which point in time, Mr. McGyver took to negotiate. He said, well, Jason, that's the landscaper's name, not I give it away, sorry. <laughs> How much setback would you give us? None. Okay, so now we've gone from officially 30 meters to how much would you give us? So if I own it, obviously I have to give it. If I didn't own it, I wouldn't have to give it to them. So therefore he's begging now for us to give him something. Okay? And Jason was pretty generous. He said, well, I said, uh, he, he couldn't believe it either, I don't think. He said, well, maybe one to five meters. And... Uh, Don said, no, 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 we need, a, we need at least 15 meters. So we dropped it to half, so that's pretty quick negotiation. So uh, I, I seen weakening, so I said, well, how about if we build a little rock wall along the side of the ditch? We could uh, keep it from washing the ditch. And he instantly said, yeah, well, we could talk about that. <laughs> and then I think, I started to think this is going to be too expensive. I said, well, how about if we just slope it back a bit and put some filter cloth along the side of the ditch. So, yeah, we could, we could talk about that too. Okay? So, where is this going? So, and so Jason stepped up then and he said, well, he said, uh, um, I can do that. That's not a problem. He said, we'll work that one out. He said, I want that signed here today and I don't want you coming back after the owner whenever I sell this thing, whenever he goes to build a house. I want this passed with no comeback. And they said, well, you put all the levels on here and we'll fix that up and we'll sign that today. And then he proceeded to say, well, I want to put another hundred loads in there on the other side. <laughs> I thought he was going to blow it. And uh, the answer was, oh, well, that's no problem. We don't care about that over there. You can put it yeah. And then he said, well, I said, no, I want to put a reserve pile on top of that thing. <laughs> and the answer was, you can go as high as you like. We don't care. Okay, so we went from we own it to you can do whatever you want. And they signed that they signed that per permit that day. Now he wanted he, now he didn't we, he didn't need the permit for himself. He got the permit signed so the new owner did not have to jump through those hoops. And now that has a big sale sign on that lot up there. If you run into Ashton, you'll be able to buy that and build a house without any problems. So anybody wants that. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, just another little story along the line of uh, of how much control municipalities have over property. And uh, they will. Uh, and we got a bad one just the other day. Donna Burns is the head of uh, the Redford Landowners Association, and uh, she's done a lot of work up in Redford for us. But her. Uh, daughter-in-law lives down by Hopetown and she sent her up a story the other day and it was a story about her house and she just got a fine for leaving her blue box on her on her veranda she left left two blue boxes on her veranda the fine for a blue box on a veranda is 500 bucks 
She got a thousand dollar fine for leaving the two blue boxes. Okay. Now those are those are municipalities like Ottawa that come up. And Ottawa tried this one about a year ago. Shirley Dolan put the kibosh on that one, but uh, obviously uh, they didn't have Shirley down there. And uh, these people and and, uh, and you know, I, I don't blame the politicians for doing that because people are the ones that want that done. Their neighbors are the ones that want them to make those laws because they want the city to beat their neighbor up because they don't like the look of their yard. And uh, so the politicians are just giving in to the whims of the crowd. They're not looking though at the laws. And the laws are there on private property to protect you from that neighbor and to protect him from you. And, and that's the way it's supposed to work. The city is not supposed to be in this business. That's not yeah. their job. Yeah. But uh, because of uh, the weak spine we've got in Canada now, that we're afraid to talk to our neighbor, they call bylaw somebody else. Yeah. You know? Rebels. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what happens with OSPCA and all those other things. They always want to call somebody else because they don't want to go up and say, you're starving your dog, you better feed him, buddy. Your neighbor, you're my neighbor, you know. You want me to feed him for you, you know. Uh, they want the law to come and do that. Because maybe the neighbor would slap you one, you know, if you sold them that. Eh? <laughs> but, uh, so uh, going back to uh, some of these laws and how much power they have on private property. Up in uh, Sabo Beach, is, which is up on Georgian Bay, is a nice beach there. It's a public beach, a nice sand beach. And... Uh, not too big, but uh, but at the end of each end of this beach is private property, and they own the beach. That's so the same beach, but if you go on Google Maps, you, if you take a look at that map over there, you'll see where there's car tracks on the private property on the sand. And uh, so a bunch of the folks in uh, Sabo Beach, uh, Sabo Municipality there, they decided that uh, they didn't want to have cars on the beach, which is fair. It's a public beach, and they didn't want any bonfires or barbecues and all that stuff on there because it probably could get messy, you know. Uh, so they uh, got bylaws made so you couldn't do that. But then, you know, these folks were using the pro- private beach as well, walking back and forth, using walking on, there was no problem with the landlord, except that it, they wanted them to then move that those bylaws onto the private property and enforce the, those bylaws on private property. And they really bitched and complained.